There, I did my video on Hatha Yoga. It's up. I'm not terribly satisfied with it, but I knew that I wouldn't be. It's one of those things that you can't really, in the nature of things, be satisfied by because you're trying to deal uh, in a currency, the esoteric, using a different currency, <laughs> the linear, i.e. our uh, language is linear. Um, our thought patterns are linear. Um, the way that I'm approaching this whole thing is not linear, it's immediate, it's direct, it's experiential. Um, linear perceptions are you're building up a story, um, whereas experiential you're just bang, right there in the middle of all of it. How do you describe that? Well, you can describe it, but it's not as easily done as one might think. Um, it gets described all the time, whether or not it gets described accurately is a completely different matter. Whenever you listen to a piece of music, you're listening to something experiential, something that is meant to directly act upon you. The only thing is it's kind of a shotgun blast. It's not precise. You don't really know what effect something is going to have on somebody. But I would say that we don't really know the effect that things are going to have on us even when we say something. Because as you discover at this level, language is very imprecise. And I, all that you're left with when you try to describe things that are experiential, you're left with just a bunch of weird metaphors that may work and may not work for somebody else. Um, it's just, uh, you have to deal in metaphors. Now, one of the things that I find useful for a male practicing Hatha Yoga is <laughs> something that males sort of almost instinctively shy away from. Throughout Hatha Yoga, they tell you that what you're doing is you're playing with a force inside of your body which is essentially female, whatever that means. Um, <clears throat> I think that okay, I've, I've sort of read that metaphorically and I think okay I've got I've got the, 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 the notion of force down. Force in, in for me in, in Hatha Yoga is nothing more than the normal scientific thing. Force is the movement of energy in one direction. Um, <clears throat> there's positive and negative forces. That's it. I, I'm just strictly science and kinetic and all that kind of thing. Now, um, a force that is ultimately female, what does that mean when you're discussing um, Hatha Yoga? What does it mean when it tells you you have to... Um, you have to awaken something inside of yourself that is essentially feminine. I look at it this way. Men think in lines, women think in images. Um, women are masters at talking about their feelings, which of course in many ways is why men sort of say women are masters at talking in riddles. Because the male mind could be entirely cultural, I don't know, tends to sort of say, okay, where is this going? What's the point to this? What is the reason why we're having this communication? Whereas the female is, I want to explain to you an experience that I'm having. Um, that's, you know, the corny stuff right out of men are from, from Mars, women are from Venus, or the other way around, or whatever, um, saying that men and women prioritize what they're talking about differently. Men are talking about the outside world, women are talking about the experiential. Gross, sexist generalization. But we're dealing with gross generalizations here to the point where um, at the experiential level you have to be general. Can you think of any way of expressing something that is more of a generalization than music? <laughs> Um, or art in general, say a painting or a sculpture. Um, it's trying to express something that words cannot express, or that words don't do a very good job of expressing. Uh, it's almost a stereotype that men go crazy when a woman sits down and starts talking about her feelings. Um, maybe it is, but that's what they tell you in Hatha Yoga you've got to do. And that's my view of what that means. Sort of awakening something feminine inside yourself. 
Um, what you're trying to do is to overcome your natural sort of, or I shouldn't say overcome, but complement your natural male linear way of thinking. Um, I think that women are perfectly capable of linear thinking and men are perfectly capable of experiential thinking. There's, you know, but just on a general continuum, it has always been assumed that women think experientially, men think in a linear way, men think goals oriented stuff. For a woman, the experience itself is ultimately the goal. Um, generalization, I know. But I think that's what that means when it says, awaken the feminine, or at least awaken the feminine so that it can work with the masculine as opposed to either not being involved at all or um, working against the masculine. Again, we're just talking about positive and negative here. Positive means you're going somewhere. Negative means, I guess, that you're not. You are where you want to be, right? You're at the uh, default position, and the default position is exactly where you want to be, whereas if you're goals-oriented, you're never quite at your position. Thus is the traditional, stereotypical tension between male and female thinking. But again, this sounds strange, because... You have to, you have to get at these things with parables. You have to go at them parabolically. Um, I use that metaphor of spinning plates or poles balancing on each other to show just how precarious it is to try and manipulate your your body from the inside. It's like building a house of cards, and it's okay because not all houses of cards fall. <laughs> um, you're, what you're doing is you're building something on a on a I would say a shaky foundation that you have to keep to keep going down to uh, you know and making sure even though it is shaky that it's still capable of holding the weight above it in terms of your movement of consciousness or growth of consciousness inside your own body um, I don't know is this an apology for the <laughs> for the previous video I don't know but it goes to show you how difficult it is to get these um, ideas out, and it shows equally how difficult it is to keep people's attention when you're talking about them. We don't have a vocabulary in our language to deal with the experiential. Is it possible to deal with the experiential in any kind of intersubjective way, in, in any other, like, to, to try and talk to other people about it? I'd say that it is, but one should always approach any such communication uh, fully aware of the limitations of your tools. Um... Again, this is one of those points of view or one of those areas where if, if, if you really want to attack an idea, this one's bloody easy to attack, <laughs> at least in a certain way. You can't attack anything experientially, but um, if you want to sort of make fun of people and say, you know, you never, you, whatever crazy road you're going down, have fun, this is the one to, to, <laughs> to attack that way. Um, I don't care, really. <laughs> Um, I don't care if people sort of you know, don't get what I'm talking about here. Um, as I say, I'm, I, I went into this with an uncharacteristic degree of <laughs> humility. <laughs> uncharacteristic of me, I guess. Um, I may keep at it. It's been enormous fun, but again, it, you, you start to get, yeah, have I completely lost everybody at this point? <laughs> Um, we'll see. <laughs>